Hi and welcome to this transition year higher level math sequences and series revision module video. So this is the third video in the sequence and series revision module which is revising everything you would have covered at junior start higher level. So this video in particular is going to cover exponential sequences. So this is the smallest part of sequences in series at junior start higher level. We're going to look at how can we identify an exponential sequence and also how we might be able to derive a general term. We're going to do that very briefly. The exponential sequences are limited to just doubling and tripling at junior cert higher level. You'll go into a lot more detail on this and use this um, in a more real world context as you move into leading cert higher level. So identifying an exponential sequence. So sequences of numbers that follow a pattern of multiplying a fixed number from one term to the next are called exponential sequences. So here is an example. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. If we were to look, it definitely doesn't have a common first difference. So we check always our first difference and we say, well, we add 2, then we add 4, then we add 8, then we add 16. So it's not bad. And then we might try, well, maybe it's quadratic, maybe it's a common second difference. So I add 2, then I add 4, then I add 8. And we realize it's none of those things. So it is definitely not linear, it is definitely not um, quadratic. So we need to see, well, what else could it be doing? And the answer for us as well, it could be multiplying. So here, 2 is double to get to 4, and 4 is double to get to 8, and 8 is double to get to 16, and so on. So this is an exponential sequence, which is written as 2 to the power of n, where 2 is coming from the fact that to get from 2 to 4, I'm multiplying by 2. Multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2 multiplying by 2. This is now known as a common ratio as opposed to a difference. Difference is when we take two numbers away. This is instead talking about when we divide two numbers. So that 2 is our common ratio. So we simply use 2 to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 1 gives me 2. 2 to the power of 2 gives me 4. 2 to the power of 3 gives me 8. 2 to the power of 4 gives me 16. 2 to the power of 5 gives me 32 and so on. So now Let's see what kind of sequence, linear, quadratic, exponential, or none of these, is given below. So let's see. First thing we're going to look at is, is the sequence arithmetic? So this is always our first check. So we say, okay, I'm adding 2, then I'm adding 6, then I'm adding, oh, it's a bit tight for space, 16. Okay, so straight away I know it's not linear, okay? Plus one, six, two. Okay, it's definitely not linear. So then I say, well, let's check the second differences. So I add four, and then I add ten, and then I add thirty-five plus one hundred eight. Okay. So I've checked, and it is not arithmetic. I've checked, it is not quadratic. So the next thing I do is I say, well, look. Could it then be instead an exponential? Is there something happening to these numbers in a multiplication sense? That means, that how? what can I do to 1 to get to 3? And the answer is, well, I could multiply by 3. What about 3 to 9? Yeah, again, multiply by 3. And suddenly I see this common ratio um, emerging. So this is, based on the fact that it is a multiplication, we would say that it is an exponential. Generally, we're going to check, is it arithmetic first? And when that doesn't work, we then check, well, is it quadratic? That doesn't work, we check, is it exponential? And the reasoning for that is because in the majority of cases at juniors at higher level, it will be arithmetic. Um, and if it's not arithmetic, it'll probably be quadratic. And it's rare to see an exponential, but it is part of your course and you could be asked to identify it. In this case, if we want to talk about the general um, term of this, we would take this common ratio, which is 3. So Tn is equal to 3. Uh, but it's not to the power of n. And the reason it's not to the power of n is because that wouldn't work. Because 3 to the power of 1 would give me 3. But if you look here, my first term is actually 1. So I'd have to say, well, 
my second term is three. So what I would have to do in this case is talk about this as three to the power of n minus one, which would mean my first term is three to the power of one minus one, which is three to the power of zero. And remembering back to our rules of indices, anything to the power of zero, and in this case, three to the power of zero is one. But the three, this common ratio, is still our big number or our base.